What is sprewing and why should you care? Hi, I'm James here at the University of North Texas uh, Metalsmithing and Jewelry Studio today. And we're gonna be talking about sprewing uh, your pieces for lost wax casting. So uh, there's some other videos relating to this whole process, but we're just gonna focus on sprewing, which is creating a system of pathways for the metal to get to your wax piece uh, in order for it to be cast. So uh, particularly for beginners, sprewing can be a little bit confusing or even overwhelming, uh, mainly because you have to think about three different stages of the lost wax casting process and how you wanna design your sprue system so that all three of those stages uh, are successful. So uh, fortunately, all three of those stages, um, well, two of those stages relate to fluid dynamics, how things are flowing. So that first step is when you're investing your piece, how is the investment gonna fully encase your piece and the sprue system uh, so that it creates a faithful mold of your original? Uh, and then the second step is when you burn out your wax and you have this cavity, how is the metal gonna flow through that sprue system to your finished piece? And then the third stage to take into account is how is it that you're gonna remove those sprues, which have become like really thick metal wires so that you can uh, best clean them up on your piece without damaging uh, the original modeling that you did on your piece. And you can get the tools in there easily uh, to remove that sprue system. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so today uh, we're going to be investing uh, Jack Skullington, our uh, little uh, mascot that was 3D printed. So I did not do the wax working on this, uh, but just to show you uh, some basic uh, sprewing approaches to things. And uh, just gonna be attaching him to a uh, flask base. Now I should mention that if you do select the kind of donut style flask base, and uh, you're not working with thicker rods for big casting trees and things like that. It's really important to uh, fill it in. I like to use brown wax because it's a little bit more malleable by hand and you can sort of just mush it in like clay uh, and make sure that it is a nice sort of flowing dome. So the smoother all of this is, the smoother your metal is gonna flow through those cavities. And so uh, any sort of roughness on the inside from the starting point of the button all the way through your different uh, sprue wires and things like that can cause additional turbulence and some, uh, some problems or even additional porosity or something like that. So make sure you have that smoothed in. And uh, then what I've also set up is just an alcohol lamp and uh, be very careful with alcohol lamps because the denatured alcohol flame is almost invisible, particularly if you're working with a desk lamp. Uh, so it can be very hot. And uh, the kind of most basic tool that I like to use for, uh, for sprewing is just uh, this type of tool that has uh, two different ends, particularly this angled one with a little sort of spatula paddle at the end. I find particularly useful for getting into some areas uh, that might be a little tricky to angle into. So uh, I've already attached the main sprue rod to the skull. And in this particular case, uh, we don't need, uh, because it's a solid mass, we don't need a lot of additional sprue rods. So have that attached on. And uh, I will be completely honest with 3D printed, particularly this purple wax. I have a lot of trouble wax welding to it. And so I often uh, will use super glue to get that sprue to, to be certain to be stuck on there because later you don't wanna be uh, investing and have it come off. So uh, let's just get into the, the basic wax welding part of it. All right, so I have my uh, flask base prepared and the main sprue rod attached to my piece and the alcohol lamp is ready. So I have my tool and I'm just gonna heat it evenly uh, you don't need to heat it too much, just until if there's any wax on your tool that it's just going a little bit liquid. It doesn't need to be smoking or anything. So it's just nicely warm. And then you want to just slip it between where you're going to weld the, uh, the main sprue to your base and keep it immobile so that it, it cools down completely. I think uh, a main mistake that uh, particularly beginners will make is anxious to get things done and then like rush around and keep dislodging it and not letting the wax completely cool down. 
Now, if you're in a situation where uh, it's difficult to hold or something like that, I do use uh, compressed air carefully uh, because the air that comes out of that is very cool because it's under pressure. And so that can sort of freeze some little wax welds in place. So that's a nice little, little pro tip. Um, another thing to consider as you're designing is to minimize the distance that the metal has to flow. So uh, I'm doing a bunch of different tests and testing different lengths to see how that affects the casting of this particular model for our sample board. Um, but this is a little bit long, uh, but it'll still work. But one thing to consider is you do need to get tools in there to cut it off. So once this is all cast in metal, you are gonna be going in like with a hacksaw and cutting that off. So you do wanna have enough space that you can get that saw in there without damaging your piece. So. Um, there are some other, this one, because of its large mass and the way that it's angled, I don't need any additional uh, sprues coming into it. So I'm not going to get into that, but I am gonna talk about uh, another piece that I have uh, a more involved spruing system on. All right, this is the, uh, the other piece that has a little bit more of an involved sprue system to give you an idea of some different approaches. And I'm doing some tests where I've not removed the supports from the 3D printing process. Now, uh, based on how sprues work, the support systems are very, very different. And they actually are kind of the opposite of how the sprues will be set up for the casting process. So a lot of times they neck in to make it easier to remove your piece from those supports, which is a problem because that'll constrain how the metal is flowing through that, that opening uh, in order to get to your piece. So a lot of times it's problematic which is why I've added a lot of other uh, sprues around it to help the metal flow to different parts of the, uh, the support base to the piece. And so maybe that'll help the metal flow all through those supports and hopefully uh, we'll get a fully cast piece. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. A um, Couple other things to consider is if you have a more involved sprue system like this, uh, it would be ideal, although it can be tricky to cut it off your flask base and weigh it so that you have a more precise idea of how much metal you'll you'll need for both your piece and your full sprue system. So uh, be very careful. Uh, you can attach all of your other sprues to the main sprue rod to make that removal process easier. If you're worried uh, about damaging your piece and losing all your work of the sprue system, then uh, you have to weigh the, the pros and cons to that. Uh, the other thing that you want to consider is the placement of it in the flask. So uh, with the piece, having it centered in the flask, having plenty of room for the investment to cover your piece at the top of it so that the metal won't break out in the actual casting process and nothing is, is too close to the, the walls where it might cause a breakout in the, in the casting process. So uh, every piece is a little bit different and I want to keep this a shorter, more concise video to just focus in on uh, the, the basics, but you're just, again, thinking about as the metal is flowing through the cavities of your investment, how is it going to quickly get to your piece and completely fill the cavity that will become your piece cast in metal uh, before it freezes and doesn't completely fill your mold. So um, there's a lot of considerations. Uh, one of them is like with this base where it's a flat horizontal plane so I've put it on an angle, uh, both for the investing process as well as the casting process, because large horizontal planes, the, the, um, some air bubbles can get trapped under for the investment process, but then also when metal doesn't like to do sharp corners as it's flowing quickly into your mold. So that can cause additional turbulence and the metal to freeze and not completely uh, fill your piece. So again, um, Every, every piece is going to be a lot different and I'm happy to answer questions, but uh, it could be a very, very long video to go into all the different permutations of it, particularly trees with multiple pieces on it and, and so on. So I hope uh, this gets you thinking about some of the design of your sprue systems. And uh, there's a really great resource that can uh, also help that is really just the one book that I go to uh, with additional questions that I might have. So this is Tim McCright's uh, practical casting book. And really, uh, like I said, this is my main, if not kind of only reference that I'll go to with uh, particular casting setups or questions or refer students to or anything like that. 
and uh, it's just a, a very comprehensive reference, but also very practical. So it can uh, answer some uh, weird questions that might come up with particular pieces that you're wrestling with. And uh, I've just had it for years and years and can't recommend it more highly. So I hope this video has uh, been of use to everybody and gets you started in your uh, lost wax casting process. Good luck. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.